You're listening to Tin Pod Radio. I'm Adam P. Nave, co-writer of The Once and Future Queen. Please don't feel me because I know what I want. Please deliver me that song out of your soul. It makes you freeze time, staring in at yourself. It's time to step outside onto the path you once made. World War II ended with the help of an elite beyond human group formed from the Allied nations codenamed The Raising. Just about any kid who's taken a history class has heard about these heroes, but even with all the History Channel specials, which rehash the same things over and over, there still isn't much known about any of these heroes. Those who would become the members of The Raising appeared as the first beyond human heroes during World War I. Each member of the Raising was the national Beyond Human hero of their individual countries. Beyond Human is a scientific term coined to describe those with quote-unquote superhuman abilities. I did the whole quote-unquote thingy because I think quote-unquote superhuman may be a copyrighted term. Before World War I started, 12 people, one each in as many countries, were mysteriously granted superhuman powers and a very slow ageing bioinorganic chemistry. Crap, I said quote-unquote superhuman without the quotes. The copyright police might be at my door soon. Before World War I started, these heroes battled criminals, saboteurs, enemy agents, and in some cases, disobedient citizens. The Beyond Human heroes hailed from America, Germany, Russia, Australia, Canada, France, Ireland, India, Egypt, Japan, China, and Scotland. The heroes that made up the raising were Muscatoon from France, Garand from America, Cardiff from Great Britain, Keitel from Russia, Yukon from Canada, and Humid from Australia. During World War II, their fights went from being just for their countries and within their country, to outside their countries for the world's freedom. They united to fight against Germany and Japan, who had their own Beyond Human soldiers. But I won't talk about those individuals yet. I just don't wish to. Writer's prerogative. The members of the Raising, whose identities were secret even before the war, disappeared and went underground after the war. For the most part, they disappeared never to be heard from again. Some say they were paid a large amount of money by their governments for their military service and retired after the war. Others say they were forced into retirement by their own governments, who'd grown afraid of them. Some weird conspiracy theorists, probably from Texas, years later would say their own governments captured them all after the war and did experiments on them to try to find out how they gained their powers. No one really knows why the disappearance of these heroes happened but treaties were signed by many nations and between many nations banning all beyond human activities, private, domestic and national after World War II. Although there are the treaties, in many countries vigilantes in costumes have appeared from time to time, with some people believing they may just be one of the original beyond humans, or at least the descendants of those who first gained more than human abilities. They don't usually stick around for so long with so much working against them, international treaties and the like. More or less, the fact is, very few beyond humans have been active since World War II, and that's what you should know. But something else you might find interesting is that a former member of the Raising, Malcolm Steed, who went by the codename Cardiff, is now the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Barely anyone knows of his secret past, and hardly anyone suspects him of being the orchestrator in getting laws passed banning all beyond human activities in the United Kingdom. Malcolm Steed is also the chief crafter of international laws when it comes to beyond humans, and just one more reason why he was elected Prime Minister in a landslide. Something happened near the end of the war that made Cardiff quit the raising, and fear all those with beyond human powers, and most of his direction and choices since then have been influenced by that fear. But there is so much more to Great Britain and the raising. 
and some day it will take me whole books to even scratch the surface of those subjects. Or maybe one day a talented British writer would like to take a crack on writing those tales. We hope you've enjoyed this 10 pod radio fiction audio production narrated by Stacy Taylor. You can find Stacy on Twitter at StaceBobT and her podcast is popcultureparlor.podbean.com. This story is written by Brian C. Williams, edited by Christina Caceres, copyrighted 2017, System Productions. Under the Training Books is a sleep-deprived, often drunk writer's brain dump, expelling the wasteland of words and thoughts from his brain so he can reboot for the rest of the week. Under the Training Book is a journal-style show resembling a diary Lynn blog. It's a mix of rants on politics, musings about faith, pop culture references, and every stream of consciousness thought that might cross the mind, all on Tin Pod Radio.